make sure you can see all of it. All righty. Danica made some videos for us to worship to. So everybody stand up. I want to see everybody dancing and singing. Hi guys, it's worship time. So I want everyone to stand up and sing and dance to this fun song with me. Good job, everybody. Let's do one more. So please keep standing. You guys stop your feet like that. And let's clap together. That's it. Well, how about so? Well, how about how about how about how about how about how about how about
good job, everybody. All righty. So Jess and Uncle is going to send all the preschoolers to kindergartners to the breakout rooms. And then I will start teaching the lesson today. So if you could do that, please, Daddy. Um, all righty. Let me pray for us before we start the lesson. Dear God, we thank you for this day, O oh Lord. We thank you for teaching us your word, O oh Lord. I pray as we uh, learn this lesson that you will lead us, that you will guide us, um, that you will teach us what Oh, can you hear me? You're on mute. Yeah, you are on mute. You are muted. 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 You are Okay, I will pray right again. Okay, let's pray, everybody. Um, dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being with us and guiding us as um, we are about to learn your word. I pray that your our hearts will be open to what you have to say to us today. Um, I pray, O oh Lord, that you will just give me the words, um, your words, O oh Lord, let it be your words that are um, taught, not mine, O oh Lord, and that you will just be with this time that we get to learn about Joseph and just the way that you used him for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All righty. So hopefully, um, Jess and Uncle is sending all of you little ones to your classes, um, but the rest of you guys will stay here with me. Um, but before we start the lesson today, I wanted to give us a quick recap of what we have learned so far um, from Abraham onwards. So God, right, promises Abraham and that he would become a father of many nations and would make his descendants as numerous as the stars. After waiting for many years, God blessed Abraham with a son named Isaac. And we need to remember that Isaac was a hundred years old when um, Abraham was a hundred years old when Isaac was born. Why? That's, that's, he was an old man, but he waited for a long time. Then we see that God tested Abraham. God told Abraham to go and offer Isaac as a sacrifice. Abraham obeyed God and took Isaac to Mount Moriah. When he was about to sacrifice Isaac, an angel of the Lord stopped him saying, do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Then next, Isaac had two sons, twins, Esau and Jacob. Esau was the older one and Jacob the younger one, which meant that Esau was to receive the birthright. This meant that Esau was to be the leader of the family. Esau sold his birthright for a cup of stew to Jacob when he was hungry. Then when Isaac grew older, Rebekah and Jacob tricked him into blessing Jacob before Esau. Then Jacob ran away from home. Okay, next, Jacob, he was tricked into marrying sisters, Leah and Rachel. So all in all, Jacob had 12 sons. The 12th son, was Joseph, and that's who we've been learning about, right, for the last three weeks. Joseph was a dreamer, but his brothers did not like hearing about his dreams. The other brothers were jealous of Joseph because um, Jacob favored him over them. So when Joseph went to see his brothers while they were tending the flock, his brothers found an opportunity to get rid of him. And they decided, okay, we're not gonna kill Joseph, but instead they threw him into a pit and then again, they changed their minds and they decided to sell him to the slave merchants who sold um, Joseph in Egypt. Then the brothers told Jacob that an animal had killed him. Okay. So now we're here. We learned this um, over the last couple of weeks, right? Joseph in this, during this time, he worked as a slave in the house of Potiphar. He was falsely accused and thrown into prison. There he met the king's cupbearer and the baker. We need to remember that Joseph is a dreamer, right? We talked about that and that was why his brothers were angry with him. And so in the prison, he was able to tell the meanings of the cupbearer and the baker's dreams, right? And just as Joseph had mentioned in the, when he was telling him what the dream meant, the cupbearer went back to work for the Pharaoh, but he forgot all about Joseph, okay? 
Two years later, when Pharaoh had two dreams and was looking for someone to explain the meaning, the cupbearer rem remembered who Joseph was. Then we come to, okay, Joseph is then brought to Pharaoh. God helped Joseph interpret the meaning of these dreams. And Pharaoh saw his wisdom and put Joseph the second in command next to Pharaoh. That's a lot of responsibility, right? Now he's, now he's the second most powerful person. The, the Pharaoh's dreams said that there would be seven years of plenty, which meant there was lots of food, and seven years of famine, which meant no food. So during these seven years of plenty, Jesus collect, Joseph collected and saved up a lot of grain to prepare for the famine, okay? And now we come back to kind of what we've been learning last week, right? The famine effect um, the famine affected all over the land, and Jacob asked his sons to get some grain in Egypt. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Joseph put his brothers through a series of tests to see if they really had changed, okay? And last week we learned this, right? Joseph had one more test for his brothers when they returned to Egypt, and they brought their youngest brother, Benjamin, okay? Joseph purposefully treated Benjamin better than all the others. He gave Benjamin five times more food. Then when they were heading home, Joseph, he went and he had his servants hide a special silver cup in Benjamin's sack. The servant went after them and accused Benjamin of stealing the cup. He said that Benjamin will have to become Joseph's slave, okay? But the brothers would not allow it. They would not leave Egypt without Benjamin. Judah even begged to take Benjamin's place as Joseph's slaves. Years before, right, we saw that these brothers had gladly sold their little brother, Joseph at the time, right, into slavery. But now they would do anything to save Benjamin, right? Given the chance for them to repeat the same sin they made in the past, they decided to do what was right, right? So Joseph was able to see that these men had a true change of heart. So that's where we've come over the last few months, right? We've been studying all the way Abraham, and now we're at Joseph. So here's a quick family tree. Um, you can see here that it goes from Abraham all the way to Isaac. And then you see Isaac, there's Esau and Jacob. And then we see Jacob's 12 sons. And so that's where we are today. Okay. And I want you guys to remember that, right? That Joseph is in the line of Abraham and also that Jacob's sons are all part of like Abraham's family. So today we are going to learn um, about Joseph and how he is reunited with his family. But before we do, I want us to understand a concept that is going to be a theme throughout this whole lesson today, okay? It's the word repentance. So repentance means turning away from sin. It is realizing that your sin is wrong and making a decision not to sin again. Just as Joseph, he looked for repentance in his brothers, God looks for repentance in us. God rejoices when we repent. It's when we change our mind and we turn away from sin. And the Bible says that God longs for every person to repent. So maybe you're like, okay, Grace, Grace, go, what does that mean? Right? It means that when you we all make mistakes, right? We all sin, we all hurt others, right? We no, none of us are perfect. And so when we make this mistake, we need to remember that, oh, I did something that's not right. And so I need to go to God. I need to go to my parents, whoever I hurt, right? And I need to apologize and, and ask for forgiveness and also not just, not just end there, right? We need to also make sure we don't do that again. And so the Bible says that repentance leads the way to forgiveness from others and helps fix broken, fix broken relationships, right? Because if you are asking for forgiveness and then you go and do the same thing, they're not going to trust you and that relationship is not going to be fixed, so today we are going to see how um, jo the Joseph's brother's relationship with Joseph was fixed because of their repentance, okay? They had the change of heart and they were turning away from their sin. So yeah, we saw that Benjamin came, right? And they, they brought Benjamin back. And we remember that the, the brothers still had no idea 
who Joseph really was, okay? And so they're talking with Joseph and all of a sudden Joseph is like so filled with joy because he sees the big change in his brothers that he can hardly hold it in. He's so excited. He's emotional, right? The Bible says that he could no longer control himself. He told all of his royal attendants and servants to leave the room. And then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers weren't able to answer him. They were, they, they all of a sudden became so afraid of him. And Joseph said to his brothers, just, just come close to me. You know, he could tell they were terrified. And so, so they did. And then he said, it's me. I'm your brother, Joseph. I'm the one you sold to Egypt. Can you imagine what his brothers might, must have been thinking during that time, right? They were, they were stunned up until this point, right? They thought he was an Egyptian, right? And not just any Egyptian. He is the most powerful Egyptian in the world, right? And it, besides Pharaoh, up until this moment, he had used an interpreter to speak to them. So they didn't even know, they weren't speaking the same language. There was someone interpreting it and translating it for them. So imagine the shock that they felt when all of a sudden he's speaking to them in their own language. They could hardly believe their ears. But now as this truth started to sink in, let's imagine all the thoughts that are probably racing through their minds. On one hand, now they probably realize, oh, that was, that was wrong for us to sell our brother Joseph into slavery. But also they were excited, right? Our, we thought this brother was dead, and, but he's actually alive. You know, in, the, in um, previous chapters, in Genesis chapter 42, it said that they thought Joseph was probably dead. And then on the other hand too, right? Their long lost brother was now the second most powerful man in the world. And they had some, done something so terrible to him. And now he had the power to do anything he wanted to take revenge on them. This thought must have terrified them. Imagine if you were them, right? Like I would be scared. So let's listen carefully to what Joseph has to say next. He says, but don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. God sent me ahead of you to save many lives. For two years now, there hasn't been enough food in the land. And for the next five years, people won't be plowing or gathering crops, right? Because they were in a famine. But God sent me ahead of you to keep some of you alive on earth. He sent me here to save your lives by an act of mighty power. So then it wasn't me who sent you here. It, was, it wasn't you who sent me here. It was God, right? He's saying, it's not your fault. This was part of God's plan, right? There's so many lessons we can take from here. Joseph made it clear that he was not going to take revenge on his brothers, even though they did terrible things for them to him, right? Not only did he forgive them, but he also, he didn't even want them to feel bad for what they had done. This is because Joseph, he saw the situation with kingdom eyes. He was looking at what God, right? He was looking at God. He was trusting God through all of this, okay? He didn't see his life as just the here and the now. He saw his life the way God saw it, as one part of God's amazing eternal plan. Here's what I mean by this, okay? Do you remember God's promises to Joseph's great grandfather, Abraham? We just talked about how Joseph is in the line of Abraham, right? God promised Abraham that he would have as many descendants as there are grains of sand on the seashore, okay? And Joseph's brothers, they were all descendants of Abraham. So God allowed Joseph to rise to power in order to keep Abraham's family, right? And their children, uh, just the, the generations to come alive during the famine. Without Joseph in this place of power, think about it. All of Abraham's descendants would have died. Joseph's amazing life, his hard life though, but amazing. It was God's way of keeping his promise. So what I want you guys to remember today is that God always keeps his promises. And as we continue to study the Old Testament, the New Testament, every, when you look at the Bible, I want us to remember and see the ways that God keeps his promises. So Joseph was very glad to be used to save his family, right? He was also excited to be reunited with his brothers. Because they were willing to repent, because they had their hearts had changed, and Joseph had grace towards them, right? He was willing to forgive them. Their relationship that was broken 
was fixed. And guess what? Joseph also, he had another person he wanted to be reunited with, his father. He wanted to see his father so bad, right? He told his brothers to go home to Canaan and tell Jacob everything that had happened. Joseph warned them that there would be five more years of famine and that they should all move to Egypt so that they would have enough food to eat. He said, tell my father about all the, the honor that has been given to me in Egypt. Tell him about everything you have seen and bring him here to see me. Then Joseph threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and sobbed, right? That was his brother. He hadn't seen him for 20 years. Benjamin also hugged him and sobbed. Joseph kissed all of his brothers and sobbed over them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. And I was thinking about this today, you know, thinking about all the stories that Joseph probably wanted to share with his brothers. He wanted to tell them about Potiphar and prison, cupbearer, the baker, right? He must have told them that God was with him through it all and all about God's perfect timing, right? God, God had the best timing. I'm sure when Joseph was going through that, right, he was wondering, God, what, what is happening? Why is all of this happening, right? But he trusted God through it all. And he sees now, this is why God let all this happen in my life, right? This is why God allowed me to become a slave. This is why God allowed me to be put in prison, right? This is why God has allowed me to be away from my family, right? He just, he trusted God. And, and now he knows, now he understands why. And now we know, right? So the men, they hugged each other, they cried together and the brothers, they accepted the forgiveness. They were willing, they were said, okay, I, I just wanna, I just, I want my brother back, right? And they were finally free from this guilt that they had felt so long for, for betraying their brother. So this story even gets, it gets even better, okay? The news reaches, Pharaoh's palace that Joseph's brothers had come and Pharaoh and all his officials are pleased and Pharaoh says to Joseph here is what I want you to tell your brothers say to them load your animals return to the land of Canaan bring your father and your families back to me I'll give you the best land in Egypt you can enjoy all the good things in the land okay let's think about this Pharaoh even gave Joseph's brothers large carts to make their move easier this is like an ancient Egyptian moving van, okay? He gives them the best of the best. He loads the brothers up with new clothes, silver, and just all the supplies that they need, right? Here is another one of God's promises that is coming true, right? God says, I'm going to bless, he tells Abraham, right? I'm gonna bless your descendants. So God even uses Pharaoh in his great plan, right? He, he helps, he, Pharaoh goes and he, he helps them. He provides all these things that they don't deserve, right? Do you think that being showered with gifts from the richest, the most powerful person in the world would be a blessing? Of course, right? Did, the, did this mean that these brothers deserved the treatment that they received? No, right? It was a free gift. It was grace, right? It was God keeping his promise to do things for people who don't deserve it. And that's something we need to learn, right? God does the same with us, right? He's willing to give us stuff even though we don't earn it. He's like, I love you, so I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna give you things because I just, I love you. And we don't do anything to earn it, right? So um, we're gonna see what happens um, when the brothers go back, okay? The brothers go back to Jacob and I'm sure Jacob was very, very stressed. He was probably like, what is, what are my sons doing? You know, um, Simeon was put in prison and he, and Jacob is dead. Like I'm, he's worried. I'm sure he was worried. Right. And so his sons come to him and all of a sudden he sees his 11 sons safe and sound. And it gets even better for him. They tell him Joseph is still alive. In fact, he is the ruler of all of Egypt. And Jacob's shocked, right? I mean, I would be, right? The son that I thought was dead for so long and, and now he's a ruler? And he, he didn't believe them. He's like, are you sure? So then they told everything that Joseph had said to them. They told Jacob all that Joseph had said. Go and, and so Jacob, he, he goes out and he sees the carts that Joseph had sent to carry him back, right? To take Jacob back to Egypt. And that gave excitement, right? To their father, Jacob. He said, I believe it now. My son, Joseph is alive. I need to go see him before I get too old and die. 
So Jacob probably was the most shocked out of anyone, right? Because he thought he was he was dead, right? The other brothers, they had sold him into slavery. So they knew that he was in Egypt, but and they did think he was dead. But but Jacob thought he was dead a long time ago. So for the past 20 years, he believed that, that Joseph had been killed by wild animals. So next week, we're going to learn a little bit more about how um, Jacob makes it to Egypt to see Joseph. Um, and I have a little more for us to, on what we can learn from this lesson, but before I show up. So we can see, and we're gonna see next week what happens um, with Jacob and their reunion, which I'm very excited for. But before I let you guys go for the day, I wanted to talk about what this um, lesson means for our lives, right? We, we see this, the purpose of the Bible, right? is for us to learn from, different characters right what how and learn from their example and apply it in our lives and so our lives are very similar right our relationship with god is very similar to joseph's relationship with his brothers so let me explain how first of all just as joseph's brothers had sinned terribly against joseph right they hurt him each one of us has sinned against god right we've all made mistakes we're all imperfect We've all hurt somebody. We've hurt God, right? And that's that's just who we are, right? Because of sin in the world, we, we've hurt God. And the brother's sin, it separated them from Joseph. And the Bible, it tells us that because we have sinned as well, it separates us from God, right? And so there's a separation now. And then, but we see that the brothers, they go back to Joseph. They take gifts to buy what they needed, but Joseph, he doesn't accept those gifts because they could never pay the price for the sin they had committed against him, right? No gifts could turn back those 20 years, right? No gifts could bring back that lost time, the fact that he was in prison, right? The fact that he, he um, was sold as a slave, the fact that he couldn't be with his family for 20 years, right? Like that didn't uh, fix that, right? Those gifts. There's nothing that those brothers could have done on their own to undo that. In the same way, right? A lot of us, we try, and I've done this a lot of times on my own in my life, where when I'm trying to find my way to God, I try to earn it by being good, trying to be the best, perfect Christian, right? But, but nothing I do can ever undo, undo my sin, my mistakes, right? And so we need to remember that. The Bible says that, right? No good work we could do can ever undo our sin. But there's hope, okay? I don't want, this is very sad, but we're going to see what happens, just like what happened with Joseph and his brothers. Joseph, he goes and he looks to see if his brothers had changed. He looks to see if they had a repentant heart. But Joseph, he's overjoyed to find out that his brothers have changed their ways, right? We see that through those tests. His brothers have changed, and when they were given the chance to repent from their sin, right, to repeat their sin, sorry, when they had the chance to do that over again by, by letting Benjamin stay as a slave, right, they did just the opposite. Likewise, God is also looking for us to have repentant hearts, right? The Bible says that when we are willing to repent, to change our ways, to turn away from sin, that he rejoices, he is overjoyed when we turn away from sin and we turn back towards him. Then we see that Joseph forgave his brothers completely. He did not hold a grudge. He didn't even want them to feel bad for what they had done. In the same way, when we turn from our sin and put our trust in Jesus, God forgives us completely by his grace. He keeps no records of our sin. It's all, it's like a clean slate. It's, it's all taken away. God tells us that he throws our sins into the bottom of the ocean. God's grace takes our sin away, okay? And then we see what happens next. Joseph's relationship with his brothers was completely restored, right? They, it was, they, were, they were brothers again, right? He hugs them. It's their relationship, they're, they're back together. They love each other, right? They hug, they talked as if nothing ever happened. When we put our trust in Jesus, our broken relationship with God is completely restored. By grace, God no longer sees that sin anymore. Instead, he sees Jesus in us, right? 
And that's why it's so important for us to remember, right? Jesus died on the cross for you and for me so that we could have this relationship with God. That's the only way that we could ever receive forgiveness. And we finally see that there's undeserved blessings, okay? Joseph's brothers were freely blessed with the best that Egypt had to offer. Joseph's brothers did not deserve these gifts, right? We saw that, but they accepted them. Because when we belong, when we become followers of Christ, not only are our sins forgiven, but we receive new life, eternal blessings here on earth, and also by the fact that we get to go to heaven, right? We don't deserve any of that, but it's by God's grace that he gives us the blessings that we could never earn. John 1 16 says, from the fullness of grace, we have received one blessing after another. The best part of God's amazing grace is that he offers it to everyone. It doesn't matter what you do. He, he wants all of us to come to him. He wants everyone to repent from his or her sin, trust in Jesus, and receive etern his eternal blessings. And so as we close today, what I want us to remember is, and I want us to reflect on it this week, is what are some of the ways that God has, has that God has like, that, what blessings God has given in your life, right? Think of the ways that you may have hurt God. Ask God for forgiveness. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to help you restore that relationship with him if you feel that's broken. Um, because God's grace is available to each and every one of us, no matter what we've done. And so I, that's my challenge for you guys this week is to really think about that and, and seeing that for our own lives, okay? So let me pray for us and then we'll close and I'll answer any questions that you may have. Dear God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the life of Joseph, oh Lord. We see that your plan, that your timing is greater than anything that we could imagine, oh Lord. We see how you have, how you sent Jesus um, to die on the cross for us and what that means and how that relationship was restored just as Joseph and his brother's relationship was restored. We thank you for just your love and your grace and your just your kindness towards us, oh Lord, that we don't even deserve. I pray, oh Lord, for this week, for each of these students as they go out to school, at home and their families, oh Lord, that they will be reminded of how much you love them, how much you wanna be in a relationship with them, oh Lord, and enable them to seek you if they have something in their lives that they're, they're afraid and they're hiding from you, Lord, that they will come to you, that they will repent, that they will turn it away. I pray, oh Lord, that you will be with them, that you will guide them in everything they do. And we lift just this week into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.